Are you living in the fog of fear? Are you living in the fog of fear? You know, uh, well, I hope you're enjoying, uh, you enjoyed your time off this week. Uh, you know, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you were praying. Well, you know, you know one of the most potent emotions we can feel uh, is fear. The experts tell us that it is our number one natural defense against all the things that are so harmful to us. Somebody says, what is fear? Well, fear is the, the anticipation of something that, is, that something terrible may happen to us. Fear not only destroys, it, it demoralizes, it robs us of hope. And when we no longer have hope, we give in to despair and depression and dejection. Listen, it's a given. Everybody is afraid of something. No matter who you are, young or old, man or woman, rich or poor, chances are you experience fear. For example, many people are afraid of heights and some of rats and dogs and spiders and so forth. Also, there are others that are afraid of large bodies of water like the ocean. <laughs> while still others are afraid of airplanes or snakes or, or elevators. We fear losing our jobs or, source of, or sources of income. Then we, we'd, be, we'd have to face the bill collectors and the creditors and the possibility of even bankruptcy. We fear financial failure. We fear pain and suffering. We all know that our health can turn on a dime and we lose our quality of life to illness and to, and to injury. Some of us are dealing with the fear of facing the possibility of divorce or estrangement. Or maybe you fear that you'll be isolated and lonely in your old age. Here's a big one. We fear the unknown beyond also known as death. Some of us have suffered much more in this world than has ever happened to us. For example, you know, the expert tell us that, that about 40% of what you fear will never happen. 30% of what you fear are things that happened in the past and can't be changed. 10% of what we fear are considered by most to be insignificant issues. And 12% of what we fear are issues about our health that will never happen. You know what that means? That means that 92% of what we fear or worry about will never take place. Yet we fear everything because everything is possible. If that's you this morning, I want you to listen to the words of the psalmist, King David. They are so beautiful. And uh, in Psalm 46, and we're going to read three verses. Psalm 46, verse 1 and 2, and verse 10. God is our refuge and strength, always ready to help in times of trouble. So we will not fear when the earthquake comes, and the mountains crumble into the sea. Verse 10, be still and know that I am God. I will be honored by every nation. I will be honored throughout the world. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we, we are so thankful to you that, Lord, so many things that bring fear to our hearts. We live in a broken world, Lord, and so many things bring fear. We're fearful about. Lord, this morning there are some people that are watching that are just paralyzed by fear. I pray for them, Lord. I pray that by your Spirit this morning will be freedom morning for them. That they will use your word has said you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. We pray that truth will saturate hearts this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. 
So listen, friend, every person, including you this morning, can get out from under the fog of fear. How? By understanding three principles that I want to tell you about. Number one, principle number one, the tight spot causes fear. Look at verse 1 of Psalm 46 with me again. It says, God is our refuge and strength, always ready to help in times of trouble. You see, in this world of ours, everybody has their own religion. Everybody has their own gods. Everybody has their own faith. Sir, my question to you is, who is your God? What is so unique about your God? Is he the God who does the impossible? Is he the God who answers prayer? Friend, I get it. If our, if our problems were merely like the ones contained in the fairy tales, then a good story would be enough to solve them. But we live in a time and we live in time and space, and the difficulties we face in daily life, they are real. They're not make-believe. That is why we need a God who can actually do something to help us. We need a God who is at work in our homes and, and stays with us and on the job and is always with our families. The psalmist says if you're in, a, in the throes of a gripping fear this morning, it is not of Jehovah God. Why? Because the God of the Bible, listen, is always ready to help in times of trouble. The Hebrew, the Hebrew word translated trouble literally means a tight spot. Have you ever been in a tight spot? Did you ever feel like you're pressed in on every side, where your options are limited and your, your freedom is restricted? In other words, you can't move forward and you certainly can't go backwards. You know what? If you're in a tight spot this morning, the only God worth knowing is a God who has the power to work in your life and in my life to save us and to protect us. We have fears, we have troubles. So we need the assurance that God, the God we serve, has the power to deliver us from bondage, the circumstances, or sin, or whatever else that would make us afraid. Listen, what was true for the psalmist is still true for you. God is your refuge whenever you feel like things are caving in. What am I saying? I'm saying the best way to live without fear is to place your trust in Jesus Christ. He is the Jehovah of the Old Testament who David was talking about. He is literally a very accessible help. Is not hard to find. Second Chronicles chapter 15 verse 4 says, But whenever they were in trouble, and turned to the Lord, the God of Israel, and sought him out. They found him. You can find him this morning. As a matter of fact, the presence of fear is a sure sign you're trusting in your own strength. But there's no need to be stressed out. Take your fears to God and leave them with him. Somebody says, Corville, what is so unique about your faith that I should embrace it? Glad you ask. Only Jesus Christ ever said, come to me. When you're in a tight spot and you feel afraid, and I, he said, will give you rest. Principle number two is that the uncontrolled circumstance causes fear. Look at with me at verse 2 again. It says, So we will not fear when earthquakes come and the mountains crumble into the sea. Some people have to, that, that, that have had to live through earthquakes have said it is one of the most helpless feelings a person can have. 
circumstances too can cause feelings of helplessness. In some cases, we can do something about the circumstances and we try to. But this is not always the case. For example, the loss of a loved one is beyond our control and is devastating to say the least. All of us at one time or the other have had experience, have experienced emotional, financial and relationship instabilities when we are, we feel utterly helpless. But you know what? In many cases, if it, if it wasn't for the troubles, we wouldn't know God. We wouldn't even talk to Him. It is through the earthquakes and the troubles that we experience His love and grace in so many ways. When Jesus left this earth, He said, I go to prepare a place for you in heaven. We don't, we don't understand it completely, but He's steering us to, the, to this place where there are no more earthquakes, no more troubles. Yet, in the meantime, he takes us through the earthquakes and hardships and troubles on the road to get there. You see, he himself went through the cross and now sits at the right hand of Almighty God. It was the British author that, named, that is named John Stott. He wrote these words. And listen, listen to them carefully. He says, one of the main reasons I am a Christian is the world is so full of suffering and pain. The world is, is so full of evil and brokenness that I could not believe in a God who never suffered himself. If I could not believe in a God, I could not believe in a God who had not suffered and, and gone to the cross. He went on to say, one of the reasons that I'm a Christian is there is no other religion that offers you a God who suffered. My friend, God hates the earthquake. We're told that in Scripture. Yet in His infinite wisdom, it's woven into His plan. It is not meant to tear us down, but to catapult us forward strengthen us. 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse, 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7 says, it says, God has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity, but of power and love and self-discipline. Maybe as you watch the telecast, you're even now experiencing panic attacks and anxiety attacks. Your heart is pounding and your skin is growing clammy. And you feel weak and faint. Listen to the words of Scripture again. God has not given us a spirit of fear. Fear is not just a feeling, but fear is a spirit. This means it's not of this world. Just as they are good spirit from God, they are also evil spirit from the devil. The spirit of fear did not come from God because it is an evil spirit. So when it comes, hear this, you don't have to receive it. It's like when you get a letter in the mail and it, that's not yours. You, you, you put it back in the, in, in the mailbox, stamp, return to sender. You know, the great preacher, F.B. Mayer, gave us some sound advice on what to do in a time of crisis. Here's what he wrote. He said, never act in panic or allow man to dictate to you. Calm yourself and be still. Force yourself into the quiet of your closet until the pulse beats normally and the scare has ceased to disturb. When you're most eager to act at this time, when you will make the most pitiable mistakes, he said, but wait upon God until he makes known his way. What am I saying? I'm saying that when feelings of fear and trepidation and helplessness begin to take root in your soul, the first step in dealing with it is to understand that they are not from God. That is the time to realize that you should confess your sins of, listen to this, self-reliance to God. 
Too many people are carrying burdens that God did not intend them to bear. Finally, principle number three, God's strategy to release us from fear. Psalm 46 verse 10 says, Be still and know that I am God. I will be honored by every nation. I will be honored throughout the world. My friend, if, if you miss everything I've said already, don't miss this. God is real. He's in our midst. He cares about us deeply and is going to see us through so we can be still. There's someone watching that needs to hear that word direct from the throne room of heaven. It's a word to bring peace to your heart, sir. The Bible says that Jesus Christ sustains all things by his powerful word. Here's the word again to you. Be still and know that I'm God. Somebody says, what does it mean to know that God is God? Here's your answer. To know that God is God is to experience him in the quiet of your heart. It is to saturate your mind with the written word of God, the Bible. It is to cast all your anxieties on God because you know that he does care for you. It is to decide that you're not going to live in fear any longer because God is with you. It is asking God to help you identify the emotions that trigger your fear response. And there are several of these emotions. Uh, let me give you some examples of what I'm talking about. For instance, the emotion of greed, which is fear of not having enough. The emotion of rejection, which is fear of not being accepted. The emotion of guilt, which is fear of being found out. Lack of confidence, which is fear of failure. How about anger, which is losing control or self-esteem? Jealousy, which is fear of not having what you believe to be rightfully yours. You know, the bottom line that you must make is that you must make a choice to believe in God. He loves you. He provides for you. He cares for you. And He is in control of your life at all times. He can melt away your crippling fears so that you can truly experience His abiding peace in your soul. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about being in a relationship with Jesus, not merely religion or religious head knowledge. Lady, be still. Sir, be still. The word means to cease striving, to stop working at it. Relax. Take your hand off the steering wheel. Let go and let God. To be honest with you, that's not natural. It's supernatural. You see, God's strategy is countercultural. You, you want to hear an amazing fact that you need to know, to settle in your soul. You know, Bible scholars point out that the phrase, fear not, is the most frequent encouragement that appears in, in the Bible. God has written it no less than 365 times in Scripture. That is enough reassurance for every single day of the year. Wow. Sounds like he knows what he's talking about, doesn't he? <laughs> But, but, but as I close, uh, let me tell you this story, you know. In the movie, in the 1998 movie, The Horse Whisperer, Tom Booker has a gift when it comes to what he calls gentling horses. In, in one memorable scene, a traumatized horse, frightened by a ringing cell phone, gallops off 
into the far end of a large pasture. Buka walks into the pasture and just sits down where he waits for what appears to be hours. Drawn by curiosity, the horse inches closer and closer and finally allowing itself to be touched by the whisperer who leads it back to its safe, to the safety of its stall. <laughs> Maybe like that horse, you're in need of a gentle touch and a soothing voice this morning. Maybe this week, life and people have handed you a situation or two that have spooked you and disturbed you and caused you to run off seeking a safe place. Precious people, listen to me carefully, please. We all face situations where we feel timid and afraid. How do I get help from God? <laughs> the answer is shocking. We must be still. In other words, whenever you feel fearful, whenever fearful emotions are overtaking you, just close your eyes and thank God that He's still on the throne, reigning over everything. Take comfort that His control is over all the affairs of your life. There's an old hymn. It's written by Martin Luther. It's called, A Mighty Fortress is Our God. A Mighty Fortress is Our God. Friend, He's your mighty fortress. And He's on your side when the spirit of fear threatens the quietness of your soul. And he would say to you right now, right this minute, be still and know that I'm God. My question is, do you know him? Will you open the, your heart to him this morning? Expose the fear that is there and let him bring healing and, and gentleness and, and peace to that heart of yours. So our question this morning, are you living in the fog of fear?